we have a quorum, so I will call the meeting to order. Um, can you all uh, in, indicate that uh, that you can hear me? Okay, great. Um, this is the special meeting of uh, Montclair City Council. I will uh, touch briefly on. I'll touch briefly on the uh, statistics, and I'll just say that that we, even though it's a special meeting and short meeting, expected we still had the uh, typical items, including uh, general business and appearances, and uh, I'll also ask all the members of the council who are uh, appeared remotely to uh, identify themselves. And going down the, the list as I see them on my screen, start with Councilor Cohn. Hi, everyone. I'm Pelin Cohn, uh, District 2 City Councilor. And Councilor Brown. Hi, Carrie Brown, District 3. And we go next. Uh, Lauren. Hi, Lauren Hurrell, District 1. Okay, and we have. In person. So, okay, the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Uh, uh, requested changes to the agenda as it appears. Okay, consider the agenda approved. Next item on the agenda is general business and appearances. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to address council for up to two minutes on any item that is not on the agenda. Um, Peter Kelman, you've got your hand raised. Thank you, Jack. Uh, my wife, Therese, and I have just returned from a three week trip through the Deep South, particularly rural Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Georgia. Our intent was to visit historical sites involved with slavery, lynchings, Jim Crow, segregation, and civil rights. What we experienced was something even broader than this. We saw how voting and inclusion are the cornerstones of democracy and of a just society. We saw also the tragic consequences of the denial of both of these cornerstones prior to the civil rights movement of the 1960s and increasingly throughout the country since 2013, when the US Supreme Court began to dismantle the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Then we returned to Vermont, where we pride ourselves on our inclusive voting processes and public participation in government and to Montpelier, where we have an ordinance that permits voting by non-citizen property owners, and where we permit the flying of the Black Lives Matter flag, and where we have a social and economic justice advisory committee, and where the city council voted that we be a sanctuary city, and where the city manager and city council take great pains to emphasize transparency as a core value. So we certainly talk the talk, but how well do we walk it specifically? Are our ballots available in languages other than English? What provisions do we have to enable people with disabilities to vote, especially those who may have significant vision impairment? Is it possible that the surprisingly light turnout, which Bill commented on, about for Wednesday's city council meeting, which included the second and final budget and bond hearings, as well as the city council's consideration of the city meeting warning, was due at least in part to confusion caused by rescheduling that meeting from Thursday, January 26th to Wednesday, January 25th, and or possibly in part due to increasing cynicism among voters and other stakeholders about the entire opaque budgeting process. And finally, to address today's main topic, are the articles of the ballot as shown in the warning written in a clear, understandable, unambiguous way, sometimes referred to as plain language? When we get to item eight on today's agenda, I'll have more to say about this last matter, and I will make some concrete suggestions for how some of the articles can be made clearer, more understandable, and less ambiguous. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I just want to uh, mention that you probably would intend to correct your uh, comments to say that the uh, non-citizen voting applies to all non-citizen residents, not just property owners, as I think of what you said. Okay, thank you. And just uh, for 
information, we have a uh, accessible voting to the ground for the visual and hearing detail. Oh, even now. Oh, sorry. It, well, nobody can hear me. Is this my turn? I think it's the mic. Oh, I'm not speaking. I'm speaking into the mic. But you should be speaking. Yeah, the question is to turn the volume up. Carol, we're working on. Uh, can anybody hear me? Yeah, now? more sound. Okay. So we shouldn't start in the audio. Can I just speak over here? Because I uh, Zoom is not installed on my new laptop. Uh, um, I just, just want to, just for information purposes, we have an accessible voting machine for visually and hearing impaired. Uh, we have the ballots. Last election, I had the ballot. Um, I cannot hear anything. There was an echo before, no, nothing. Uh, if, if anybody has any questions about accessibility of voting, you can give me a quote. We'll it, we can, Let's, sorry. Maybe if we try to turn on the and it test, I think it's actually pulling from this laptop, not yeah. the actual audio from the room. And yeah, so now we're getting a little bit of an echo. My sound is turned on. But somehow we have to have a microphone going out to get into the room. Right. And this one, I think. Well. Yeah, that's why both Bill and John aren't clear because it's going through that microphone, not through their mics. And then, you know, we can address this issue separately. This uh, point well taken. We have facilities in place for uh, many, many facilities in place for uh, accessible voting. So we can make sure we publicize those. Um, this is you know, the actual agenda. What? So this, this is live. Off that machine. Okay. Uh, I'm hearing the people, I'm seeing the people online who can't hear us, so. So to, to start the meeting though, we, they could hear you, is that right? I'm not sure, I'm gonna step down there and see if that Okay. Thank you, Jack. Okay, so we're going to start Folks, can you hear me now? Okay, great. Um, thank you for your comments, Peter. Uh, next item is consent agenda, which we do not have a consent agenda today. Next item is to review petitions. Have there been any petitions re received since uh, Wednesday night? Nothing to add in petitions. So now we are up to item number seven public hearing for the warning. Oh, that is not on. Okay. We have uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, a request for the council to sign on to an energy energy code uh, proposal. Uh, Bill, perhaps you could give us a brief introduction. If you can hear me, can people hear me? Okay. Um, so just very briefly, we were asked to support an effort of a group that is seeking to uh, change building codes, national building codes, uh, to be more energy friendly. And uh, we got the request yesterday morning. They needed an answer by today. Uh, our energy person looked at them, thought it was a good idea. Uh, it, all the material was forwarded to the council yesterday. And it's simply, it's not really any action the city can take. It would simply be the city council endorsing this effort if they chose to. Um, so it's really up to the council. Thanks, Bill. Donna. I think you have to come down here. Yep. 
I think I think this is a great idea, and I make a motion that we in, endorse their uh, activity. Is second. there a second? Okay. Any discussion, members of the council? I'm not seeing anyone raising their hand. Okay, uh, does any member of the public have uh, any question or comment they'd like to make? Okay, in that case, we're ready for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Okay, we've adopted that uh, resolution. Next, we will open the public hearing on the uh, warning for the city meeting ballot. Sir, Peter Kelman. Uh, yes, Jack, thank you. And John, thank you for uh, answering my questions about accessibility. I'm, I'm glad to know that. I was actually just asking. I didn't know what it was. Um, but let me just say at the outset that uh, I believe it is possible to write articles on a ballot in language that is legally sound and yet understandable by the vast majority of the public, otherwise known as plain language. As examples of this, I would cite the four articles submitted by the Montpelier Roxbury School District, articles eight, nine, 12, and 13, which I would suggest be used as models for the city to use in the future. Uh, let me just add something that's probably obvious. Lawyers are not known for writing in plain English. So it is really best practice for a municipality to have such articles written for them by appropriately skilled communications specialists who know how to write in plain language and then have them vetted by counsel to make sure they're legally sound, not have the lawyers write the language. That language is bound to be somewhat incomprehensible, not to mention ambiguous in times. As to the articles in the warning before you today, in my opinion, articles one through four dealing with elections and items 17 through 19 are clear enough. I mean, they could be better, but they're clear enough. However, as a copy editor, I would, would make a couple of small changes in articles five, six, and seven, which I could share with you if you want. They're not critical, but more importantly, I believe that article 14 and to a lesser extent, article 15 and 16, all of which are amendments to voted articles on town meeting day last year are unclear and or ambiguous and need some rewriting to make them less so. They all begin clearly enough by stating that the voters are being asked to amend, quote, authorization provided, horrible passive voice, to the city council on March 1st, 2022. However, it's not particularly clear that the sentences following that refer to the amendment and not to the original authorization. It's lacking a, a transition. I would suggest the following fixes to that. Put the language of the original authorization in quotes so that we know very clearly that that's the original authorization. Um, and or after the words city council, insert the phrase by the voters. So we know that the authorization, the authorization was by the voters, not by some, you know, pa passive. Well, well where, where did this come from? The voters approved it. Let them know that. Then begin the second sentences in all three articles with the phrase, if amended. That makes it clear that everything that follows is if this is amended and is not the part that was voted initially a year ago. I think those two changes alone will make this much clearer. However, Article 14 is really a mishmash. I think John was right to not just try to fix it on the fly, but I'm not sure that the fixes not on the fly uh, really improve it. I'm going to give you an example. What is the meaning of amended improvements? I, I don't think that's, I, I, I know what you meant, but the improvements aren't amended. The, su the suggestions of the improvements are amended. What is meant by other highway infrastructure projects? There weren't any highway structure projects mentioned beforehand. And is it accurate to list Confluence Park as an improvement? I think that's going a little too far. And what is the point of stating the estimated cost of improvements, especially if we suspect that Confluence Park alone would cost more than the amount listed there? In my opinion, that is just asking for a legal challenge. 
the whole thing. That sentence should be struck. Here, I have a much simpler way of saying this that is much more grammatic, that is, I think, much clearer. If amended, proceeds from this bond, this bond that was already approved, um, this bond funding may be used to finance a range of city infrastructure projects such as colon, a renewable heating system and other energy efficiency projects at the public works garage, semicolon, new street lights, traffic lights, and intersection improvements, semicolon, a retaining wall on Marvin Street, semicolon, Various highway, I would say street, but if highway is the right language, okay. Various highway infrastructure projects, semicolon, and something like this, possibly some kind of Confluence River Park project. To distinguish it from the one that we already know, it's going to cost far too much to be included. I, I could send this to you if you want to consider it. I could also give you the very quick uh, copy editing changes for the others if you want to consider it. You don't want to consider it. Fine, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm I'm actually interested in uh, in having you send that to us, and I'm not sure what the best best way to do it is. So I'm not sitting at my computer, but uh, I think you mean I, I could email to uh, to to, um, uh, to Bill and John or whoever. John, John, sure. Yeah, that's okay. I'll just um, do that. Thanks, Peter. Any, any other members of the council have any anything to say or any thoughts on uh, on the warning, uh, Carrie? Yeah, I appreciate the points that Peter's making about plain language. Um, I will leave it up to staff. I think for a judgment as to whether it makes sense to try to make any changes right now. Um, to this warning, but um, regardless of whether that happens or not, I, I do think it'd be worth approaching this from a writing in plain language standpoint going forward in the future from now. I think I agree with him that's important and can be done. And I, I agree with Carrie. Uh, because it's such a late time, I do think maybe Article 14 is more important than the other edits to consider. Uh huh. And Lauren, I can't tell if you're trying to be recognized. If you're not, that's fine. Um, I, I would just echo, appreciate Peter's comments. I think making things well, meeting the legal needs <laughs> to like that it's clear and defensible, you know, which sometimes conflicts with plain language, but doing our best to do that. I mean, I, I'm definitely open to looking at language for that. I, it makes me slightly uncomfortable to try to do this on the fly in case we are changing some legal meaning in a way that, um, but if we can look at it and it very clearly doesn't change that, I'm open to um, looking at it. Okay, and uh, Bill and John, have you gotten the language yet? Yeah. And wonder if it would be helpful to share it on the screen. No, um, if I send it to you, you would not be able to see what that's being installed. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I think so. Open your email and then share it. Change this. Change this. These are more, these are simpler. I know, I'm just thinking out first. Yeah. Uh -huh. so that's 
Ah, uh, here we are. Thank you. So, members of the council, we knew have have the language. Um, Did you say that louder, John? Oh, he just sent another. So this starts after the first sentence. Right. So is it one of writing? Is it all in one email? I don't think so. Yeah. Second email. The second email is one you should be looking at, I think. They sent info mock up version for you to see. Oh, the, the email is my suggestion for uh, Article 14. My second is just a, a phrase to put before Articles 14, 15, and 16. Yeah, just the if they amended. So, do we? Could you put up the uh, the new email on the screen, Bill? Well, the the new email just says. It just keeps suggesting you put if amended on all three. That's the only thing. This is the okay. Only okay. So I. Do we have a member of the council who wants, who is wanting to uh, make either a motion or a proposed amendment? Yes. Donna, uh, Donna Bate, I'd make a motion to accept this portion to go to replace what as now stated in article 14 in the sentence, I think it's a second sentence proceeds from the bond that we would remove that and add if amended and all the rest. Under streets, I would take away his question and just say various highway infrastructure. We do tell our streets highways when we're dealing with projects because some are and some aren't. Streets. Good morning, right now, Amanda, as we go. Um, so just, I was waiting to see what you'd like to do. So, right now that I'm on it, um, if great. You, if you get slow, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it here. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, Donna, does your uh, motion include the language and possibly some kind of con confluence river park project? It does. Okay. Uh, the only change from what Peter sent is removing the streets. The word street uh, and the question mark and likewise to this amendment would be to add if amended in front of proceeds in the other article 14 15, 15 and 16. 16 uh -huh. okay is is there a second second i second okay thank you um is there any discussion uh carrie um, yeah, so I, two things I'd love to hear from, uh, Bill and John, what they think about this. I think this is, this is okay. Um, and then two, I'm not comfortable with the, the last wording of this, possibly some kind of Confluence River Park project. Um, so I would be happier if it said, and, you know, Confluence River Park. So that it, it's in there with it's covered under May with everything else. Mm -hmm. Are you moving to amend uh, Councillor Bates' motion to say that? Um, yes, I will move to amend Councillor Bates' motion to change the last phrase to and Confluence River Park. Is there a second for Councillor Brown's motion? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion of Councillor Brown's motion to amend the original motion? Uh, my concern, Donna Bates speaking, uh, my concern is that when you say the Confluence Park, I think people have what they've seen, which is a major project. And I feel like what Peter added was a little more conditional. 
that I think is more acceptable by the community and myself. So that's why I accepted Peter's amendment as written. Anybody else who wants to speak to that? One thought I have is that that's all true, but we're also operating with the with the overall figure of 1,815,000. So I don't think anyone could read that and think that we're talking about the two to $3 million project that people have been hearing about. I don't think people connect the dots. <laughs> that could be right. It could be right. Yeah. Um, so are you ready to vote on uh, on Carrie's motion? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Uh, nay. Sorry. Okay. So we'll have to do a roll call. Um, uh, do you want to do that, John? I don't have oh, you don't have voice. So, uh, Brown. Aye. Um, Pearl. Aye. Cone. Aye. Um, B. Nay. You may have. You have to vote for four. Right to make four, and the chair votes aye. So the motion's been amended. Now, um, before we go to vote on the main motion, I heard Councillor Brown indicated she wanted to hear from staff. So, Bill, you want you have a? Uh, we amended it, and then we have to vote on the motion. Well, we're okay. This is. Relevant okay. to the to the main motion. So, um, first, I'd like to say in general that all the articles that we staff draft, uh, we do try to do them in as plain language as possible. Uh, bonds come with that come with a very uh, much higher legal threshold. They have to go through bond council. They get bond rated through the bond bank, et cetera. So, those are the ones we've usually had attorneys. Um, that said, I mean, I I agree that I personally like the language better uh, that's been proposed. Um, it, it, you know, it would have been great if we'd had this earlier and had a chance to run it by a review. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not in a position to offer any kind of legal counsel on this. I, I, it would seem that it's going to work, but I can't really add more than that to it. Thanks. I'll just say that in my position as clerk, I'm agnostic about the ballot language. <clears throat> okay. Um, does any any member of the council have anything else they would like to say about this before we uh, proceed? And what I think I'm going to suggest is that uh, if there's a uh, if, if we do vote to amend it, I'll ask the assistant city clerk to print us up a whole new warning before we, uh, we vote on it. So we all have the actual warning that we're using. And I think she's prepared for that already. City. Oh, I said <laughs> clerk. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So are we ready to vote on Councillor Bates? motion as amended i have one question okay uh in the the wording as written in this email has the first this italicized is that going to be part of what's written on the warrant or not uh, i don't see a need for that i don't that's italicized like this oh yeah, that yeah. was not your intention. No, it was the words, not the okay. types. I mean, okay, I'm, great. That you know, for the ballot, it usually doesn't line mm -hmm. up. But it's quite the ballot. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of uh, Councillor Bates' motion to amend Articles 14, 15, and 16 of the uh, proposed warning 
indicate by saying aye. Oh, aye. wait. Aye. Oh, no. sorry, Carrie. I'm sorry. I thought we were just doing the one about, um, I didn't know we were doing three. I, I thought she three said items. I did. I Okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I need to look I at added, it more closely. I added Article 15 and 16 that we would add the... If amended. What will it... I'm sorry. Can in you, front can of the you, word per proceeds. So look at uh, item 15, for instance. So you just add the two words, if amended? Is that what she said? That's what she said. Yes. And where would that go in Article 15? Yeah, would, would it be possible just to kind of walk through the changes for everyone's benefit, just so that oh, I can make sure I've got I'm clear? Because I'm not sure if I do, and I, I don't want to, I want to make sure I'm really clear on what you guys want. Um, yep. Okay, that would be awesome. Um, what I mean, what I'll do is I'll just kind of get close right here. Yeah. That's okay. And we haven't voted yet. Okay, so what's your preference? Do you want me to? Why don't you come on up? Okay. Yeah. Yes, on the later section, but that has yep. to do with years. That's the, only That's the only change. Oh, okay. So we don't okay. need to do 15 and 16. All right. So, okay, we're just doing the proposed amendment to Article 14. Good. And Clarify the motion. And I, right, I go ahead. Who seconded? I agree um, with the clarification. Okay. So to, to be clear on what we're doing, the uh, Article 14 at the end of the first, after the first sentence, we would read, if amended, proceeds from this bond funding will, will be, may be used to finance a range of city infrastructure projects, such as a renewable heating system and other energy efficiency projects at the public works garage, semicolon, new street lights, traffic lights, and infrastructure improvements, intersection improvements, thank you, Bill, semicolon, a retaining wall on Marvin Street, semicolon, various highway infrastructure projects, comma, and the Confluence River Park project, period. Got that? Okay. Are you ready for that vote? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 If opposed? Okay, the motion carries and we have amended Article 14. Now I'm, you want to, copies? do you all want uh, copies of this before we uh, vote on the email. entire warning? Uh, assistant city manager is sending it by email to all of us. Yeah, email will be good. Thank Great. you. I receive it. Thank you, Kelly. And Peter, do you have any other comments on, on the warning as proposed that you want to be heard on now? You know, they're they're minor, and I I, I agree this is not the right time to do this. It, it it should be done in the future. I think just a little more carefully. I'll just give me, for example, Article Six. Uh, it puts the Central Vermont Public Authority thing, and then in parentheses, it it uses the the uh the acronym which is good except that article five should have used article five preceded it so article five should have had that and then you that same um uh, uh designation and the other only other thing i'd say is if you look 
just for future, if you look at the difference between Article 7 from the city and Article 8 from the school board, you'll see a very clear, the, the way in which the, the, the school board's um, articles are just much clearer to say the, the, the same thing. Uh, it's very, I think, great in Article 8 says, shall the voters of the school district adopt a budget of rather than appropriate the sum of? I mean, I think it's just, it, that's just clearer language. And if you go through it, you'll just see that the way that they wrote that article is 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 very clear. But I'm not saying- No, but I, I, I need to address this because they're actually, they're not the same. Okay. Under law, again, um, <laughs> the, the school budgets, adopt an entire budget. And, and that is the way the state education funding system is set up. And this is exactly the way the state mandates that they write their article. The city only appropriates the tax appropriation. You're not approving the entire city budget. You're only approving the amount of property taxes to be raised. So if we get more money, we can change the budget. We can spend it differently. That is different from municipal governments than school budgets. So they're not actually you're not approving the overall budget. You're just okay. this is how much we're taxing ourselves. I I understand, Bill. Bill, but we stay stay for a minute, please, Bill. Please stay for a minute. But what about the the following sentence in Article Eight? It is estimated that this they they go on and explain it a little bit. Is there no? Is there a reason why you couldn't go on and explain a little bit what you just said? What you just said is great, but I don't think most people know that. I I, I think 80% of the people have had been pretty clear on what they're doing over the last 10 years. So okay. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say we move on. If we want to have a discussion sometime in the future about wording of articles, I, I think you made your points, Peter. Um, so at this point, we will close the uh, public hearing. Now the question before the council is, shall we approve the uh, draft uh, warning as uh, amended. Is there a motion? Can I make a suggestion before we get to that point uh, for sure. a couple of changes to make? Okay, sure. Okay, um, just a couple of, of little sort of technical things. Um, in Article 6, there, I believe there should be a question mark at the end that's missing. Uh, I see instead of a period at that mm -hmm. after the word board. Okay. Um, well, no, not after the. There's no question marks. Some of you have, some of you don't. No. Um, oh, Article 5 and 6 are both missing question marks. Yeah, not just, yeah. yeah. And all the others have question marks because they're questions. People are saying yes or no. And then um, also 15 and 16 do not say requested by the city council after them. And I'm wondering if that if there's a reason for that or if that's something we wanna include since we're doing that on the other ones. We'll do that too, yeah. Okay, and then similarly for 18 and 19, I don't know if we wanna just for consistency. Um, uh, well, actually those those are requested by the city council too, so they should be on there. Well, they were, no. so those were permitted to be on. They're, they're requested. They were, would have been petitions that we allowed, I know. But the council put them on, but I think. Right. But typically, so, it's, it's, so yeah. first of all, it's 100% up to the council what you want to put prepare the parents. The, the, the past practices have been when it was an item that the city's council requested and was sort of asking the voters to support they put the Okay. Just something you're putting on on behalf of somebody else. They did not. Okay, I got it. That makes sense. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Um, satisfied now, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't mean any sarcastic content by saying that. <laughs> I didn't take any. Okay, good. Now, is someone prepared to move the approval of the uh, budget or the the ballot as? Uh, has been amended, including the changes that, that you suggested. Donna Bade, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So just to be clear, I'm just saying this out loud. Question marks on five and six. Yep. And the council parenthetical on 15 and 16. Right. Yes. And no changes to 18 and 19. 
Right. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We have adopted the uh, draft ballot. Any other business? I'm not aware of any. City council reports. Does anyone have a city council report? See you all next month. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll just, just raise your hand if you want to make one. Otherwise, I'll just move to the next item, uh, which is the city clerk's report. Oh, it's enormous. Okay, another 45 minutes or so. Okay. You're passing. Uh, city. Oh, Helen Cohn. Sorry. Um, can I uh, announce that uh, I am <clears throat> having gathering um, on Saturday at the library. If anyone wants to come and meet me, because I'm running in March, can I say that or? Sure. What time? Uh, okay. So I will be at the Hayes room at the uh, our local library between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. tomorrow. So I want to invite um, everyone who wants to come and meet me and just talk about uh, our vision for our co community. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, is there a city manager report? Just remind everybody there's an event at 10 a.m. Also at 10 a.m. tomorrow at the Country Club Road site. If people are interested in discussing the people of that site. Yep. Great. Okay. And with that, our very quick meeting is adjourned at uh, 12.43 p.m. Thanks, folks. <laughs>